You work in a plant and you're asked by your boss to increase the plant refrigeration capacity. You recommend the following. You can only recommend one. Pick which you recommend. All right, we'll go ahead and stop. And in your mind, you're thinking, I have a compressor, I have a condenser, I have an expansion valve, and I have an evaporator. And the fluid flows from the evaporator to the compressor, from the compressor to the condenser, from the condenser to the expansion valve, expansion valve, and it goes in this loop. And uh, what is the refrigeration capacity? Is that the rate at which you're dumping hot to the environment? No, it's the rate at which you're picking up cold out of the cold, the rate at which you're removing heat, right? So tons of refrigeration or in kilowatts. So if you wanted to increase this, how can you do it? M dots, the rate at which it's flowing in the loop. Now, somebody says, well, you just can't increase the mass flow rate by itself. Sure, you're going to have to get a bigger evaporator, bigger compressor, bigger condenser. Maybe the expansion valve can stay there, doesn't, you know, but maybe you oversize it or make it a little bigger. But yeah, but if you really wanted to boost the system's refrigeration capacity, uh, basically the best choice of these is to increase the mass flow rate. Hey, how come we don't have a higher percent? Oh, well, you'll have opportunities to improve. You work in another plant, and you have another boss, and you're asked by the boss to make the plant operate at a lower temperature. Say that it uh, works fine at negative 10 degrees F, but they really want that walk-in freezer to be negative 20 degrees F. You recommend what of the following? to decrease that temperature to make it go colder. All right, Professor, you this is unfair. You said all the questions are going to be SI. Okay, negative 23.3 degrees C, and then you figure out whatever negative 20 F is. All right, okay. Uh, but anyway. We need to stop this, and let's go ahead and grade it. And, whew, so maybe I need to explain a little bit. Um, there is a very famous curve in this book, and it's a P, a T curve. And it goes like this, and it goes out to a point, and then it has another point, and it kind of kicks this way or that way. Hey, what is that curve? Where do we see that curve? Uh, they said, oh, over in here, that's all G. Over in here, it's all L. Over in here, it's all S. You remember this curve? You know, everything you needed to learn in life is in kindergarten, and everything you need to know in thermal two is all in thermal one. <laughs> you remember this curve? Huh? Yeah, this is it. And so basically, what's happening in this range, well, first of all, what's that point right there? critical point. And what's this point? Triple point. Excellent. And we spend a lot of time talking about what's happening between along this line from L and G and L and G. What are you happening? You're vaporizing, vaporizing or condensing. But basically, it basically depending on if you give me a temperature, this temperature, I can tell you at what pressure it likes to change phase. Whatever substance it is, if it's water, some refrigerant, some other substance, ammonia. So this would be knowing, given a temperature, I can get PSAT. As a function of temperature. Or turn it around, and given a pressure, I can get saturation temperature. So TSAT as a function of, uh, of uh, pressure. So if I want... To make it colder, the trend in the slope of this line is such that what do I do with the pressure? Go lower. You need a lower evaporator pressure. Well, okay, let's grade this. No, that's a wrong one. I need a lower decrease. 
There we go. Revote. <laughs> All right. So you want to lower the evaporator pressure. Now, somebody says, I can't just snap my fingers and say, lower the evaporator pressure. It's going to happen. How are you going to mechanically make that happen? It's not an option up here. But how are you going to make the evaporator pressure lower? Make that compressor really pull on it. And the line, the line that connects the evaporator and the compressor, they get a name for that line. Is it the push line, the blow line, or the suction line? Suction line. Anybody work in the field? It's the suction line. All right. Now, after the compressor and the condenser, this line right here has another name for it. I know that this is a very short, these are typically long line. This is typically a long line if there's a separation between the compressor and the condenser together, typically an evaporator and expansion valve are together. Anyway, this long line, if this is called the suction line, this line should be called something like the push line or the, you know, forcing it. You know, instead of drawing it one way, you push it. But they don't call that, they call it the L-I-Q-U-I-D liquid line why do they call it liquid line because it's so flexible it acts like a liquid copper tubing uh, no it's because what's flowing inside the line what's flowing inside the line you remember the state of this fluid is saturated liquid true and what's flowing in that line liquid liquid then why don't they come back here and forget the suction line and call this the Vapor line. You know, you can ask great questions and never get answers to these questions your entire life. You just can't. So it seemed like you should call it the liquid line, the vapor line. That makes sense. The suction line, the push line. That would make sense. But let's be dyslexic, switch it up, and we call it actually the suction line and the liquid line. There you go.